Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we're going to cover technical writing for engineers. So, let's get started. This video is covering what exactly technical writing is and whether or not you'll need it as an engineer. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because I did recently have to um, write a full technical paper, so that's about eight pages worth. And it's something that I didn't expect and I wasn't really you know, looking forward to because I'm like, wait, <laughs> I only took like one English class um, and I also don't have my PhD. I've never written a paper as an undergraduate student. Why am I writing a paper now? I'm an engineer. We shouldn't be doing much writing. You know, engineers are the ones who try to fix the problems. They're not the ones who, you know, write reports. However, these are mainly in the areas for research and development. So if you're in one of these two areas and you're an engineer, you should definitely expect to write some sort of technical or proposal paper. So basically I want to give you guys a heads up if you are majoring in engineering and you're an undergraduate student and you have yet to uh, be in an engineering job or have an internship to just keep in mind that you still need to know these writing skills you still need to be very proficient in English um, if you're in the US or proficient in the language that you're going to be getting your degree in so I'm kind of gonna go over why you would actually need to write technical papers and why it's necessary, especially in the research and development fields, even if you're an engineer. Um, so with that, I'm gonna get to it. The very first reason is because you need to be able to communicate your ideas. So let's say you're working on a project and you're working on enhancing some sort of code or software, or you're creating your own software tool. You need to be able to explain what it does and how it enhances that particular software. So you need to be able to have the, the language, you need to be proficient in the language that you're, you're, you have your job in to be able to explain what exactly you're doing. And when it comes to technical reports, that's where you actually need to explain in detail the components that you're using or methods you're using to enhance those tools. And in order to back up these ideas and your current work, you'll also need to show some evidence of like, okay, well, yes, you're saying you're enhancing it, but how are you enhancing it? Is it actually enhancing it? So you need to prove that it's actually enhancing this, the software tool or that your new tool is actually working the way you said it was going to work. And you do that through testing and you have these testing methodologies. That way you are able to explain your idea, show how it works, as well as prove that it's actually working the way you had said at the very beginning. You provide evidence to support those claims. So all of that, is, it's amazing because you would think that, okay, well, you're an engineer, you really shouldn't have to worry about any of that, but you actually do. And that's one of them is so that you can share your ideas and those who actually like that idea or think it's a good idea, they can read that report or that paper that you wrote and maybe they have some information that you didn't have in that paper that could probably help uh, improve the work or to further progress the work. And then that's how you how you develop. That's how you develop new systems or softwares um, as well as expand or you do research on a particular area and people are like, oh, I didn't know that that was possible. I could probably use my own research or my own tool on that new evidence or that new information I, I wasn't aware of. So all of that is very important in terms of the research and development area, especially if you're an engineer. The next reason you're expected to write papers as an engineer is because you might need funding for your project. So you need to prove that what you're doing is either uh, helping the company grow or expand, um, improving their profits in some shape or form. You need to be able to prove that, okay, what you're working on um, has meaning and it is impactful on the company or the investors, whoever is going to provide you the funding. And you could do that through a proposal. And this is usually where you explain what your project will be, what it will do, and how it will help the company or the investors in the long run. Now when it comes to how long the proposal papers are, I'm not really sure. I think it's about four pages, uh, but that's where you explain basically the project and what you plan to do or you explain a new way of developing something. You share your ideas and your thoughts in that way. So it's not like you have to have the components written out or you have to go into detail and run experiments and show results like technical papers. You instead 
explain like the abstract of it. So you give a broad overview of what this plan will be or what this project will be and you also have the forward thinking in there so you explain how it'll help the company um, 10 years from now, 15 years from now or the investors 10 years from now, 15 years from now. So those are the differences also between you know proposal and technical is that technical is just what are you doing right now and how are you doing it and then prove how all of that is actually making an impact or proving everything that you stated at the very beginning. Whereas a proposal is where you explain your idea or your project so that you could get funding for that project. So the last reason is more so to your own benefit, to the engineer's benefit, is so that it'll look good on their resume. Um, they could say, hey, I was an author of a technical report and it was published in you know, 2020, whatever it was, and you could say that in your resume. So if you ever leave your job you can, and go to a new one, you can say, hey, I wrote this paper. Um, I was part of this project. And you can use that to your advantage and say how you were involved in that project. If that project is related closely to that new job, then you could definitely take advantage of that and use that as leverage. Explain how the project works, explain how you were involved in that project, explain your contribution in the paper as well, uh, because that also requires experience. You need to have some sort of experience to write papers. So it'll ultimately it'll look really good in your resume if you say that you were an author of a paper. Um, but yeah, those are all the reasons why you would probably write a technical paper as an engineer. And once again, it would most likely be in the research and development areas. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you're not in that area, then I don't think you would ever need to write a technical paper. So if you're part of a corporation that does mass production, let's say, um, then I don't think you would ever need to write reports. Uh, you would just be doing the programming work or you'd be testing the software tools, make sure that they're running as expected or you're enhancing the tool, whatever it is, but you're not actually developing the tools or software, you're, you're producing a product. So that's where the differences lie. And even if you become an engineer and you're in a job that doesn't require any sort of writing, I still think it would be a good idea to learn how to explain the technical part of a project because it'll really help you coordinate with others and explain exactly what you're working on as well as if you are interested, if you're really interested in like new uh, development in certain areas or research, then you can understand those papers, you can read those technical reports and be like, okay, I see what they're saying, I understand that because the, the those papers are very different than the average like research paper because of all the technical terms that are involved in the engineering world. If you could brush up on that area, then you'll be that much better at being able to read those reports. And at the very least, you could say, hey, I can read technical reports, I understand them, um, whatever it is. So that would actually be really nice to brag about. Those are all the reasons why you would need to write a paper or a report as an engineer. So if you guys like this video and if you would like to see more or you'd like me to talk about my experience with my technical paper, um, then please let me know in the comment section down below and subscribe if you would like to see more. And yeah, I hope you guys like this video and thank you for watching. Bye.